Hey sportsmen, John Bergsman here. Welcome to this week's video fishing report here from Fisherman's Digest. I'm here today in a gorgeous rental right here on the shores of Portage Lake in Manistee County. Now this rental is a full home rental right on the water here at Portage Lake. Awesome option. If you're looking to come up here, because we're going to talk about this lake as one of the feature lakes, get a hold of the Portage Lake Motel, which is right across the street from here. But we got five great reports. We've got a report from Escanaba. That's right, a really solid report. You'll see a lot of great pictures and a really, really in-depth report from Mason, a guest reporter. Then we talked with Lee Gould again. We went back and talked with Lee. He this time was down in Barry County, which for you guys is down oh, a little bit south of Grand Rapids in that Wayland between Grand Rapids and Gun Lake area. Really good report, in-depth report about where bluegills are this time of year. Then we're gonna go all the way out of state up to Lake of the Woods, Minnesota. Now Lake of the Woods is a huge destination location for ice fishermen. They usually have great fishing up there. We've got an awesome report from Joe Henry up at Lake of the Woods Tourism and my friend Brian Nye over at Adrian's Resort. Then we're back here to Michigan and we're gonna talk about the little town of Curtis up in the central upper peninsula. They've got some consistent fishing going on right now in Curtis, Michigan. We're gonna end the day way out west. Our friends at Haybale Heights sent us another report from Devil's Lake, North Dakota. They are whacking really nice perch and walleye. Stay tuned, five great reports, all meant to get you out on the ice. So first report is from Escanaba, and we've got a guest reporter, Mason, a local from up there in the Germfask area, who sent us an awesome report. He and a few guys and some family members, looks like one of his little munchkins was out there with him. They're on Little Badenoch, way up at the head of the bay, and they reported wonderful success on a mixed bag of big pike, eater walleye, and nice perch. So. What are they doing to get those? Like I said, head of the bay. If I'm gonna give you a warning right now, just because I'm talking about Little Bay to knock in Escanaba, does not mean the whole system is open and able to be fished. It is not. From the narrows out is really sketchy, really iffy. If I was you, I would say do not go um, north of the narrows there, or south of the narrows actually, uh, out towards the big water. That water, it has not been cold enough to really freeze it up. There's a few really, really uh, good local fishermen who have ventured just a little ways out, but not very far and all, and they've told me, don't send the public out there, somebody's gonna sink to the bottom. But if you're looking for awesome action, the head, the tip of the bay up there has been very good. So how are they catching the fish? Using tip-ups. Now, if you're familiar with Little Bay to knock way up at the head there, there's a real steep drop on the east side of the head of the bay. That goes from like two feet of water room right down to 28 to 30 foot of water. Right at the base of that drop, Mason tells me he's setting tip ups and he's getting a nice big mixed bag of really big pike and or nice eater size action walleye. So 25 to 30 feet just at the base of that drop off is where he's setting his sucker minnows for pike or his shiner minnows for walleye. Now, if you're gonna add something and you've got a pop-up shanty and you wanted to jig, that's where he's catching the um, uh, perch and a couple of walleye, and he's doing that with a dead stick right tight to the bottom, maybe six inches off the bottom. Wigglers seem to be the ticket. Now, he said everything they caught was jammed with either wigglers or gobies, and that's why using tip-ups and sucker minnows or uh, all the way at the bottom with wigglers, with heavier tungsten, that seems to be the ticket right now for the bigger perch. So, little bay to knock right now, again, not the whole system, but definitely from the Gladstone Narrows up to the north, all the way to the head of the bay, there's some pretty safe, pretty solid ice out there if you, you, you know what you're doing and you know how to move around that body of water. I'm gonna throw that caution out there because there is a big pressure crack over by the Vagabond Campground, and so there's just some things you gotta watch out for. But for those that know what they're doing and those that take their time and are safe, there's some really good fish to be had right now in Escanaba. 
Wyandotte Lure manufactures soft plastic baits and fishing tackle right here in the Detroit area. Our famous original Wyandotte Worm and the new Motor City Minnow are made with our own special blend of material that is soft enough for a fish to bite, but durable enough to use all day. Our baits are available in over 30 different fish catching colors. Just another reason why Wyandotte Lure is known as the king of the river. Go to wyandottelure.com or ask for them at your local bait and tackle store. So, next report, Lee Gould. He, Lee has been a great asset for us this year, providing us with some really good informational reports. No different this week. Now, Lee bounces around the lower peninsula and really likes to just hit different bodies of water with his presentation. So, we're gonna talk about three things that Lee said that most of the guys should be focused on here going forward from where we're at into February. And that is, is most of the panfish, and Lee likes to target bluegills, crappie, and perch, most of those are on three different pieces of structure right now. They were either on depth, break, or edges, so when you get to a lake, if you have a distinct drop-off, like here we're at Portage Lake, they have a distinct drop-off at about seven to eight feet where it will roll off where there are structural drops on this lake. That's what I'm talking about, where there's a depth break and an edge, a distinct edge. That's one location. The other location would be basin areas. In other words, big flat areas of deeper water that usually have either a mix of soft bottom and muck or a little bit of sand and gravel. But soft bottom and muck, believe it or not, is the best stuff for ice fishing because that's where all those microorganisms come out of the bottom, whether it's wiggle, wigglers or angle worms or leeches, they're gonna be in that soft bottom and that's where the perch and the bluegills are rooting around trying to get after those type of microorganisms. And the last spot, which is where Lee caught this week's reports fish, as you see the fish going across the screen, Lee tried a couple of those main primary things. Then he got to, he, he wasn't doing well and he said he went to a main lake point structure that had known he knew that that point structure had weeds on the edges of it last fall when he had been boat fishing. That's one of the big tickets and one of the big keys that Lee wants to impart to us is, guys, when you're fishing in the fall, it's important to make mental notes of where those weeds are at because those weeds aren't gonna move when the lake slicks over with ice. Those weeds are stuck where they're at. And every year at different lakes, weeds will grow in different spots. So it's real important to take your GPS and to go ahead and mark those in your handheld GPS for use during ice fishing season. Because Lee had this whole group of fish caught off of a main lake point that had some weed edges on it in the fall. He went back to him this week. He, he started drilling. He got to about eight feet. He'd started at 16, drilled his way up to eight. When he got to eight, he noticed the weeds at eight and 10 foot of water, started to fish. And that group of fish you just saw go over your screen, he caught in short order off of main lake structure that had weeds. So key on those three things, break edges and depth changes are always a good spot. Deep lake basins can also be a great spot. And also main lake structure or points or humps, submerged humps with the presence of weeds. If you have that recipe, you should be able to catch fish. Now, as always, Lee was using uh, uh, the um, jaw jacker series of ice baits, really, really small, small plastics. And he was tipping those on a 3mm Fat Boy Ice Series Tungsten. So, so that presentation seemed to be working great for him. And hey, we'll look forward to another great report from Lee here in the future. But if you're looking to get out and you're in that greater Grand Rapids area, check out Barry County and the lakes that surround that whole Gun Lake system. There's a lot of small lakes in that area of the state. And they're really a lot of times underfished and underutilized and they have great fish. You know, every fishing boat needs a place to put rods, store rods, and have rod holders to go fishing, and the Anger Quest Family Fish has that in spades. I'm Captain Lance Valentine, and here on the Family Fish, I'm going to show you the integrated arch. We've got the ability to put up to five adjustable track tech rod holders on each side so we can run offshore planer boards. We've got rod storage across the top, the ability to put in lights, radar, VHF radio antennas, and any accessories we need to turn this Family Fish into a hardcore fishing boat. Check out this and all the other great features on AngerQuest at your local AngerQuest dealer. 
Now our next report is from Lake of the Woods, Minnesota. Now this is one of my favorite places, so much so that my sons and I will be doing our annual pilgrimage this upcoming weekend all the way up to Lake of the Woods. Now we always jump in with Brian Nye and the group up at Adrian's Resort. Brian's been a friend of mine for 30 years. As you see these pictures come across, that's Brian's little munchkin and his sister out in the shack just a couple days ago whacking nice walleye and perch. But the ticket for Lake of the Woods is this. This is a destination location. This is a place where people go for three or four days. You rent a, a house, typically from the lodge you stay at. That house is positioned out on the lake, and then you fish out of that house. Now, it's heated out to probably 60, 65 degrees in the shack. It's very comfortable. There's four seats in the shack, and there's two holes in front of every seat. So there's plenty of fishing spots for you. And the circumstance that occurs at Lake of the Woods is as follows. Uh, these resorts plow miles out onto Lake of the Woods. Last year, I was out as far as 20 miles in one of Brian's shacks. So these guys work hard to keep those shacks positioned over the active areas of the basin. And that's generally what this is. Unless you're having a portable and you're real mobile, you really don't structure fish individual structures here at Lake of the Woods. You are basin fishing for marauding massive schools of walleye and sauger. Now these schools move around constantly. So there's no real right house. It's really about getting in a house getting your line set in the proper depth and staying put and really fishing and staying in the water. Now, the general presentation here at Lake of the Woods is nothing more than very light line, maybe a, a quarter to a half ounce jig with a nice shiner, typically dead hooked so that it can't be stolen easy or it can be tail hooked and live hooked. That's great for a dead rod. And then you just drop it down. Now I typically fish within six inches of the bottom here at Lake of the Woods and I'm always aggressively working one rod, meaning pounding the bottom to create a silt and sound uh, area. And then I've also got a dead rod usually sitting right next to it, maybe six or eight inches off the bottom with a tail hooked live minnow that's struggling. And a lot of times the inactive fish that might be drawn in by your jigging action will come up and go ahead and hit that dead rod and you can set the hook on them. Now again, this is a big experience. Lake of the Woods is a monstrous lake. It's a lot of fun. You'll catch a lot of fish. The smaller saugers will keep you busy. Those uh, 12 to 15 inch saugers will be messing with you all the time and then you're waiting for those big walleye bites as the groups come through. The nice thing about Lake of the Woods is there's no minimum size on these saugers. You can dump those 12, 13, and 14 inch saugers, which my sons and I typically do because those are the best eating fish on the market. I mean, they're just crazy good. And the folks at Adrian's or any one of the resorts there at uh, Lake of the Woods in Baudette and up in the Northwest Angle will also take care of you by cooking your catch off the menu. They've also got full service restaurants. I mean, an ex it's an experience, guys. You gotta try this out. I've been doing it, like I said now, this is my 28th year of going up and visiting Brian. Now, Joe Henry from Tourism is out right now today while I'm filming this. He's out uh, up in Northern Minnesota on the Northwest Angle. Now, the Northwest Angle is a series of resorts that are kind of stuck with the Canadian uh, boundary in between. So what the folks at Lake of the Woods Tourism have done to no small amount of expense is they have plowed a 20 mile long road uh, so that you can access the Northwest Angle and its resorts legally without having to cross the border. So this is a very cool experience as well. So if you're, whether you're coming up here to fish the Baudette area of Lake of the Woods or whether you're gonna take a real excursion and head across to one of the resorts that's up in the Northwest Angle, the bite right now at Baudette is about 26 to 30 feet. That's where most of the shacks are setting and that's where the bite seems to be happening. If you're up in the Northwest Angle, Joe says, it's about 22 to 27 feet. But again, the resorts will put you on the fish. They'll get you what you need. They'll take care of you. Lake of the Woods, it's got to be a destination for you. If you've never done it, you're, you're missing something. This is a really cool winter destination. Are you in the market for a new trailer? For all your trailer needs, big or small, visit Beck's Trailer Superstore on Highway 127 
north of St. John's. So our next stop is Curtis. And Curtis is one of my, again, another one of my favorite places. I vacationed for years at Curtis in the summertime, usually in late July, because I just love the central upper peninsula in general and all of the fishing opportunities it gives me. Plus, I really like Big and South Manistique Lake. They're two of my favorite lakes. I do a lot of fishing there in the summertime. Uh, very productive lakes. But Mick from Mick's Bait up at the top of the hill in Curtis uh, called me and said, John, we've got a great tournament coming the last Saturday in January. So the last Saturday in January, put it on your calendar, it's the Fr Curtis Frostbite Fishing Derby. It's a one-day Saturday derby. It's for pike. And let me tell you what, you'll have a great time because there is some monster pike in South and Big Lake Manistique. Now, what's going on right now? Mick tells me really good consistent mix bag of crappie, perch, and bluegills on South Lake. And then on Big Lake, a really decent bite for perch and walleye. Now, if you're looking to target these crappies, they are mid-depth. Wherever you find uh, the crappies, they're going to be mid-depth, meaning they're not tight to the bottom. They're not right under the ice. They're usually mid-depth. So if you're in 12 foot of water, you're probably looking for crappies about six down. The best way, a slip bobber, really delicately placed so that it really goes down easily. A split shot, a gold hook, and a tail live hooked shiner or big fat head. That usually does the tick ticket for crappie there on uh, South Lake Manistique. Now, if you're looking for perch or bluegills, I typically use tungsten and spikes or waxies, and I usually fish very close to the bottom. Now, don't be afraid to work it up a foot, but I'm always going back to the bottom, reestablishing bottom, and then going ahead. This is where electronics is really important. If you're looking to uh, be a good crappie fisherman, uh, electronics is almost a must because you just have to know where they're suspending. That's a really key part of catching crappie. Now, walleye fishing and perch fishing over on Big Lake Manistique, it's typically going to be the Burnt Island area to the west. There's a big flat there that had a lot of weeds last fall on it. That's been a very good area, a productive area. Also to the south of Burnt Island towards Chamberlain's Restaurant, that flat had a good number of weeds on it. Weeds are a big deal when you're fishing Big Manistique. You're going to want to be around the weeds. Also structural break humps like Helmer Bar, which is basically north of Burnt Island about a mile. You'll see a mid, mid lake structure and it comes up to about eight feet. That's Helmer Bar. A lot of times that bar on the tips of it will hold very nice fish. So there's some starting points for you. Of course, Anderson Bar that runs the whole shoreline from Burnt Island all the way to the Log Cabin Resort. That's a really good productive spot as well. Lots of fish and lots of weeds in that area. Uh, I haven't fished too much in the basin area of Big Lake, but I got to believe if a guy figures that bite out, he'll crush them because that's where I see most of the big perch holding towards the fall of the year. So Big Manistique Lake for walleye and perch, South Lake, and the last Saturday in January, get on up to Curtis for the Frostbite Pike Derby. Are you already thinking about summer? Thinking about that new boat or pontoon? Now's the time to get your best preseason deal during the Summer Dream Sale event going on at Lakeside Motorsports and Nelson's Speed Shop. Order your dream boat now and be the first to get it on the water. Michigan's pontoon superstores, Lakeside Motorsports, and Nelson's Speed Shop will help you design your dream boat. Come see the all new state of the art showroom and service facility at Lakeside Motorsports. Plus, Lakeside and Nelson's guarantee honest, fair, upfront pricing, and no hidden fees. Your summer fun begins now. So our last report of the day is from Devil's Lake, North Dakota, and the folks over at Hay Bale Heights Resort and Campground and guide Mitch uh, Doherty, the fall brawl winner from down in Lake Erie, he spends his winters up in North Dakota chasing ice, perch, and walleye and putting his customers on him with his custom snow bear unit. Now a snow bear, for those of you who don't know, is literally a massive snowmobile type looking machine that is actually an entire mobile fish house. If you look it up and Google it online, you'll know what I'm talking about. And Mitch drives all over Devil's Lake. He's very mobile and he's able to really get his customers on better fish because of the snow bear. It's awful cold in North Dakota, so you gotta have some permanent structure, but you can't just sit tight either. You gotta be mobile. So the snow bear is the perfect solution to that. So 
What's happening right now, as you see by the pictures, really nice size. There's not, this is not, Devil's Lake is not a small bite lake for perch. This is big perch when you go to Devil's. So that's what you can expect. They're biting right now in 15 to 19 feet of water in and along shoreline submerged timber. That seems to be, Mitch told me, what's been the, been the best bite for both the perch and walleye combo trips. Now he's catching them on tink tungstens tipped with waxies or spikes or rattle baits. Now, rattle baits are kind of like a, like a rip and wrap, you know, where you drop it to the bottom, similar to what you would cast fish on Saginaw Bay and let it sink to the bottom and lift and fall that rattle bait. Uh, they're actually vertically jigging rattle baits, the smaller size, and they're really having good success with the walleye come flying in and just crush them. So it's not a slight bite at Devil's Lake. It's usually fish coming in and really laying the lumber to it. So uh, jigs, uh, I'm sorry, not jigs, but tungstens with spikes and or mousies. Um, wigglers, if you could get them, I'm sure would be awesome. And then rattle baits. Uh, there's a fair amount of guys who use jig and wraps as well. If you're good with the jig and wrap, that's a very effective bait here at Devil's Lake as well. But get with Mitch, Straight Fins Guide Service, located right now at Hay Bale Heights Resort and Campground over in Devil's Lake, North Dakota. So in my close, I really want to talk about a couple of things. We're here at uh, Porter's Lake Motel. We're here in their on-lake rental, which is a full unit. And I'll show you this. I'll video this as I'm talking. Uh, and I'm telling you what, this is a full service place. This cottage, is, that's literally what it is, a cottage. You can put six, eight guys in here, no problem, and have a great weekend on Portage Lake. They've also got the unit right across the street, the Portage Lake Motel, for guys who just are by themselves or got a couple of guys with them. But these guys do a great job of servicing that greater Portage Lake area. And guys, you know what the key here for Portage Lake is? It's about big perch and big gills. Now, what's the status of Portage Lake? A lot of guys have been asking me about three lakes. I'm here looking right now at Portage Lake. Now, I saw a few guys out fishing, so that means a few guys feel like it's safe. The east half of the lake, meaning from downtown all the way across to the marina, to the east seems to look to me to be pretty good. I'm seeing a few bodies moving around. We're going to get some colder weather. I would certainly think by the weekend this lake is going to be pretty tightened up on that east half. Now remember Portage Lake has a very deep hole on the west half towards Lake Michigan and I would avoid the west half of Portage Lake for a good another week. Don't take your chance with your life. Uh, there's currents over there that come from the big lake through the channel and they can really do a number on the ice that's up by the mouth of the channel and over that deep hole in front of uh, Portage Point. So I would take my time and stay off of that. But the east half, certainly fishable. And quite frankly, guys, the east half of the lake is the best fishing half anyway. It's big weed beds. Uh, so right out here in front of the Portage Lake Motel all the way across uh, to the marina, and to the east seems to be safe. Now, Bear Lake also uh, has got some good fishable ice. So Manistee is starting to turn. Couple quickies, a lot of people calling in and asking, John, what about Hubbard Lake? What about Crystal Lake? What about Mullet Lake? Uh, no, no, and no. Those lakes are simply way too sketchy to go out on right now. Do not go up there. I've heard some reports that Burt Lake has firmed up enough on the shorelines that guys are getting out to enough depth to catch some fish, but we'll have a full report on Burt Lake next week. But the big three of Hubbard, Mullet, and, and uh, Crystal Lake and Benzie, absolutely no way. Not safe, don't go on them. Uh, they're taking your life into your hands. Find a small lake, find one of these other lakes that you can fish until those lakes freeze up. Until then, we'll see you next week on Fisherman's Digest.